call the meeting to order and ask uh, all to rise uh, for the singing of our national anthem. Uh, Mr. Superintendent Kennedy, who is standing in for uh, Secretary of the Board, Director David Thomas, just want to make a comment that uh, due to all kinds of prior commitments, we have a number of people online and we have a few uh, people at the other end of the table, but I verified that everybody is away for valid reasons. You want to do the roll call? Thank you. Will do, <coughs> Chair Petersma. Trustee Buckland. Yeah. Here. Trustee Karkner. Present. Trustee Garrell. Present. Trustee McPherson. Present. Trustee McAllister. Present. Trustee McDonald. Present. Trustee McMillan. Present. Trustee McRae is reg is regrets tonight. Trustee Petersman. Present. Trustee Richards. Present. Trustee Swan. Regrets at this point. Trustee, sorry. Uh, hello, Trustee Swan? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Student Trustee Castleman? Present. Thank you. Okay. All right, now we'll move now to the approval of the agenda. I have a motion to approve. Uh, Trustee McMillan and Trustee Garrell, all in favor? Opposed? Yes. That carries. Okay. Any declarations of conflict of interest? Okay, seeing none, I'll move on then to the report from private session committee of the whole of January 12, 2011. Uh, one property matter was discussed and the following recommendation to the board has been brought forward. Um, moved by, do I get a mover for this motion? Tr uh, Trustee McAllister, seconded by Trustee McPherson. Uh, that the Upper Canada District School Board decline any interest in Lacole Elementary Poli uh, Public Horizon Juin. Did I get that any little close? Jeunesse. Right? Jeunesse. There you go. Thank you. I won't talk about who was my French teacher just in case he wants to uh, deny that fact. Um, any comments or questions? All in favor? Opposed? Aye. Okay, that carries. Thank you. Sorry, John, that was unfair of me. Any, we now move now to approval of minutes. Any errors or omissions? I have a motion to approve the minutes uh, and verify them as correct. Moved by Trustee Karkner, seconded by Trustee McPherson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move on to the report from uh, Committee of the Whole Public Session Regular Meeting, January 12, 2011. Um, there was one motion coming out of that report. 
the recommendation from Community of the Whole to the Board was that the uh, Upper Canada District School Board renew the following memberships for 2011-2012 year. Uh, uh, the Ontario Public School Board Association and the Ontario uh, Student Trustees Association. Is there any comments or questions? All right, got to get a mover and seconder for that. Uh, Trustee yeah. uh, Buckland and Trustee McMillan. All in favor? Aye. Right. Yep. Opposed? That carries. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions from the committee of the whole report? Okay. All right, so we'll move now on to the report um, of Special Education Advisory Committee. And I believe uh, tr tr uh, First Vice Chair McPherson, you're going to present the report tonight. Yes, as soon as I can find it. Okay. Uh, we met uh, just on January 11th at the board office in Rockville. And that evening we had two meetings. The rationale behind that was is that we're required by ministry mandate to have 10 meetings a year. And we were already one behind because of the municipal elections. So we decided to split it into two, so we actually did two meetings that night. The first meeting simply was to introduce the new members of SEAC. We have uh, four new members. Uh, Ann McCray, John McAllister, Amy Booth, and Dr. Andrew Thomas. And then we went on to hold uh, elections for the chair and the vice chair positions. And Kathy Blair was nominated and appointed <coughs> as the SEAC chair for 2011. And Susan Richards was elected as vice chair for 2011. Um, next thing we went on with was largely an orientation session uh, to review for the new SEAC committee, and the full orientation will take place at our next SEAC meeting on Tuesday, February 8, 2011. Um, we basically did a little round table, tried to get ourselves familiar with each other, and we introduced and shared our background information. Uh, we also uh, had a look at the what I call the October report, and some discussion ensued on that, and that essentially outlines the needs of our special ed students and their exceptionalities. Um, with the discretion of the chair, I would move that we accept the report. Okay, I have. Uh, we don't actually require a motion, but okay. uh, that's okay. fine. Um, are there any comments or questions for First Vice uh, McPherson? Trustee Karkner. Uh, not in reference to the report that he just gave, but I just wondered, there are minutes from these meetings. Could they be attached and put into our uh, board docs? Uh, basically, it's a report that's done, and it's largely what appears here. We can have the minutes of the meetings, though, placed in a folder. Yeah. There's yeah. no problem with that. Yeah. As a note... Um, Actually, the trustees normally get the copy of the SEAC agenda in the previous minutes, if I'm correct. Yeah, they're still being mailed out. That's correct. Um, just as a note, a uh, follow-up on the board docs, that, that whole system will eventually, uh, we're in the next uh, 12 months, we're led to believe, will be expanded so that we could use it for all the meetings. Right now, it's just for the board meeting, but so then we'll be able to use it for SEAC and any other meetings that we want to operate. Uh, but we will uh, ensure that the minutes... Now, are there any other comments or questions? Uh, Trustee McAllister? Just, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, two comments. The one uh, is that uh, there was concern expressed at that meeting by the members about uh, the ongoing funding of uh, special education uh, in general mm -hmm. and uh, the, the costs. I have to say that I uh, personally found it quite interesting uh, looking at uh, and learning more about uh, special education and, uh, and the SEAC committee. The second thing that uh, uh, they dealt with was uh, the number of exceptionalities uh, within our board. And 
I think we have a very good handle on it. Now, you made reference to discussion around that list, and uh, can you give me an, a sense of what the tone of that conversation was like that what was discussed? In the discussion on the October yeah. report? Yeah. Um, well, for one thing, our numbers are certainly not going down. Um, and we actually had, I believe, October report of 2009 and October report of 2010. Uh, we serve a great many students that are not identified. Um, that's in keeping with our philosophy that if a child needs support, that the board will do what they can to support them. Um, I don't know whether I've got the exact document with me tonight, but uh, I'm sure Superintendent Edwards could comment and perhaps share the document with the trustees. Uh, do you have anything you want to would like to add, uh, Superintendent Edwards? Um, yes, to you, Chair. Uh, it is a document I'd be pleased uh, to, to share with you. Yeah. Um, the October report, it, as uh, Trustee McPherson says, does, does list all the numbers of students that are reported by the schools uh, for the exceptionalities, as well as the. Um, it also um, the numbers represent all the students uh, by the special education grant that uh, do, are not formally identified, but have IEPs, both elementary and for secondary. Okay. And the the uh, Section J report breaks down the numbers by the by communications, intellectual, exceptionality, physical exceptionalities, and multiple exceptionalities. Okay, are there any other comments or questions? Okay, thank you very much, uh, First Vice Chair McPherson, for uh, filling in and delivering the report. Uh, move on now to the Ontario Public School Board Association report. Uh, Second Vice Chair McDonald, uh, do you want to bring us up to speed on that? Yeah, there's not a lot of activity since our last board meeting. However, um, early in January, uh, the four uh, school boards in Ontario were part of a consultation group with the Ministry of Education. And uh, this related to funding. Uh, it's a typical process that um, the ministry goes through and has a consultation process to get uh, input, feedback on um, uh, potential um, areas of concern or areas that uh, the potentially would need improvement uh, as it relates to funding. Uh, OPSPA did participate in that, and uh, there's a document that they produced um, and were provided to the ministry. That document can be also, also be found on the website, uh, OSPA's website, uh, primarily under the Fast Reports area. I'll just speak quickly about a couple of the areas. Uh, one of the things that are, is of concern is in the next, I uh, think I believe it's the next three years, uh, there is a 1% increase. It's actually 1% for the next two years and 0.9% in the third year uh, to OMERS. Every 1% increase relates to a $27 million increase to education uh, dollars in the province. That's not a direct impact to the Upper Canada Board, but just to speak, $27 million across the province. That's funding that is typically not um, going to be easily and readily accessible. So $27 million for the next year, uh, three years each year uh, has a direct impact on, on school budgets, uh, board budgets, I should say, as opposed to school budgets. Uh, that's one one big thing. Uh, the next thing is um, they are trying. OPSPA has made the comments and recommendations as it relates to uh, capital. Uh, there is a number of uh, issues that we've uh, reported on a number of uh, a number of times that the, the ministry needs to uh, to look at how they fund capital uh, and do it in a more um, long term vision process as opposed to uh, uh, kind of shooting from the hip and, and getting money once in a while. Well, there's also transportation funding uh, that we've addressed. Uh, typically, transportation has been a uh, sore point for Upper Canada Board over a number of years, but uh, as well for most public English public school boards as well. So they've uh, they've addressed those issues. Uh, they've also addressed the issue around accessibility uh, for Ontario's Disability Act. Uh, this again is something that uh, is needed within the province, but has an impact on the Ministry of Education as a result of decisions from other ministries. 
And so, you know, we've seen this before with Ministry of Environment when it relates to water testing, uh, various types of things. Uh, the money doesn't necessarily always flow very easily uh, into the ministry from uh, the Treasury out of the province of Ontario. It's a competing demands uh, for the uh, for the province, the provincial government. Uh, but again, Ops has made uh, recommendations on uh, uh, funding associated with that and how it should be rolled out over the next uh, the next years. Uh, the, the physical plant issue doesn't really hit uh, most of us until I think it's 2025. Uh, but for more details, you can certainly look at the uh, the document on the OPSPA website. Uh, OPSPA has the Public Education Symposium this weekend, uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, with uh, governance <coughs> models taking place on Thursday. There is a regional meeting uh, planned for thir sorry Saturday morning. The next board of directors is scheduled for the 25th and 26th of February. And uh, I will have more information as it relates to the response potentially from the ministry on uh, on our consultation paper and uh, more activities as it moves forward. And just jumping back, uh, thinking of the uh, the funding and GSNs, the province has made a commitment again this year that uh, once the budget has been delivered in the latter part of March, the GSNs would be announced. So we should know funding fairly early in the game as opposed to getting it uh, in the past. We used to get it sometimes into June. So. And there's an expectation that by the middle of April we should have GSNs announced. Uh, that's about it for a report from OPSPA, Chair. Was there any sort of, uh, or have you picked up any unofficial sort of talk about uh, what we might expect out of the, the budget? Uh, no, I don't have anything on that. Um, you know, just as I, as I alluded to, there's, there's a lot of competing demands. There's also in the ELP pieces that we have to deal with across the province. Uh, OPS has dealt with that as well in their consultation, in their uh, response to the consultation. But I, I don't I don't have any sense of it and perhaps uh, over the next couple of days I can get a one-on-one um, -on -one with uh, with Wayne McNally and, uh, and get a sense from him but certainly the, the information that's been flowing out uh, has been very top level vague in the sense that uh, this is basically where they're uh, they'd like to approach it, but uh, no, no commitments from the ministry at this point. Mm -hmm. there, was there any talk about um, the uh, state of the pro provincial finances? Sorry, state again. Was there any discussion about the state of uh, the province's finances? Uh, I haven't seen any of that. I'm not certain that uh, that I've seen any of that information. Are there any comments or questions? Uh, Trustee Karkner? The meetings that are being held on Saturday morning <coughs> with the regions, are we as trustees allowed to attend those? Yeah, I would yeah. encourage everybody to attend. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's why I mentioned it is. Uh, it is an open meeting. Uh, the board of directors uh, are, as I said, are conducted I think, the 25th and 26th of February, so the, there is a regional meeting on this Saturday. There will be a further regional meeting, and typically there are Four throughout the course of the year, um, I, I believe March uh, 25th to 26th is the the next regional meeting, and it would be um, within the eastern region. So and I, I can't recall where it's uh, going to be held yet, but it would be uh, either in Belleville, Kingston, Brockville, Ottawa, Renfrew uh, format. I mean, or, or any points in between. And throughout the course of the regional meetings, two of those four, uh, we have common agendas. So there are uh, questions or uh, required feedback that's reported back to the board of directors as a result of those, uh, those regional meetings. Um, I'm not quite certain that this regional meeting uh, is, is going to have a lot on it. It's uh, usually only about uh, an hour and a half or two hours, I think, on Saturday morning. I, I, I don't have the agenda in front of me, but... Um, They'll have uh, some common questions and, uh, and, and input that uh, they would like to, uh, or information they'd like to provide to trustees usually. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yes, okay. Uh, Petersma? Yeah, go ahead. Um, this is the first teleconference I participated in, so mm -hmm. I just want to apologize if I 
don't quite know the rules yet or that, but I would like to uh, expand on Director Thomas's comments at our last meeting. Is some people are coming across very loud, and I have my phone volume on high, and some of the people I can barely hear what they're saying. So perhaps if we could just do a reminder to speak into the microphone. Okay. Who are you uh, struggling to hear? I, I could barely hear her, Trustee uh, Karkner or Trustee McAllister the last time. And okay. in the beginning, I couldn't hear uh, you very well either. Okay. All right. Uh, just, just as a reminder, I don't. Yep. Thank you for the feedback. Um, and, and I'll echo those comments. Other than yourself, Chair Petersman, it's very difficult to hear the other trustees. Okay. Well. All right. Um, Trustee Karkner, if you could just move down your mic just a little bit. Just have it actually. Yeah, somewhere. That's good. I'm going to get you to do the same thing, Jeff. I'm not sure why yours isn't working, Mr. McAllister. Now, or Trustee McAllister. That isn't where Millie sat, is it? No, she's sat where Millie sat. Because I know that we had hers too, especially, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, carry you. on then. Um, report of the student trustee, uh, student trustee Matt Kosselman. The floor is yours. Um, our third student senate meeting will be held on Friday, February 25th, 2011. Uh, from a list of themes student senators chose at the first senate meeting, I have decided to tackle substance abuse and bullying as my next theme. The issue is quite topical according to surveys completed by senators, many of whom place the issues among their greatest concerns. The speaker has not yet been confirmed, however I will be ta talking with students to see if there is any OSED student group members who wish to deliver a student presentation. As agreed upon at the previous meeting, we'll, we will be electing the new student trustee early this year as at our February meeting. Any interested student wishing to fill the role next year must fill out a form ahead of the Senate meeting. Uh, Jeremy Hobbs will be gracing us with his presence at our next meeting to discuss internet issues. Uh, the issue of web filtering uh, did actually come up at our last meeting and ahead of Jeremy's speech, I'm sure students will be delighted to hear that there, will, there are already plans in place to relax the, and the current web filtration structure according to a memo that was sent out on January 11th. I have been in touch with Hilary Deneau, who serves as a student trustee for the Catholic School Board in Eastern Ontario. She, serve, she shares my interest in hosting a coterminous meeting in April, and we will be having a more in-depth discussion on the issue after exams are finished in early February. I will be attending my second OSTA conference in Ottawa from February 10th to the 13th. At the conference, I have been given the opportunity to speak on an issue that I'm particularly passionate about. There will be a few student presentations at the conference, and I will be delivering a presentation on the Algonquin to Adirondack corridor. The A to A region runs along the granitic front neck arch or axis. It also includes the sandstone soils to the east and the limestone underlain soils to the west. They form a jagged interplay of soil types resulting in a huge variety of vegetation types. I have been actively involved with the ADA Conservation Association for a few years now and I've worked with activists in the past to challenge the Lanark Robertsville Uranium Mine as well as drilling projects in the ADA region through the CCAMU or the Coal or Community Coalition Against Mining Uranium. I hope to use that experience and knowledge to represent the area effectively. OSTA also does a student newsletter entitled Our Voice, where student trustees are asked to contribute essays for the content. I submitted my first about Canadian youth disengagement and participa participatory democracy, which can be found at the end of my report. High school students from across the board have been busily preparing for exams. I have one tomorrow morning and two more on Friday. So after this uh, busy time, I'm hoping to reconnect with my team to work on February Student Senate meeting. Finally, in preparation for the next meeting, I'm hoping to have a second newsletter prepared for our Student Senate meeting. If any trustee has any content that they wish um, to include in our next newsletter, um, be it an address to students or perhaps some news from your ward, please send it to me by Friday, February 11th to matt.castleman at ucdsb.on.ca. Thank you. Okay, are there any uh, comments or questions uh, for trustee, uh, student trustee Matt Gassman? Any on uh, trustee McAllister? Matt, could you tell us if uh, Austin and the, stu and the, uh, the student trustees are involved in, uh, I believe it's called uh, Ontario Votes? Um, there was a student vote representative at the uh, last uh, conference that we were at. 
um, and we also um, uh, we were involved in the 2010 municipal student vote campaign um, and we were involved in promoting that uh, through our different networks and um, uh, it was in very interesting to, to hear some of the, the founders of that organi organization at our last meeting. So we're, our, we are involved in, in that organization. Um, but, you know, not so much particular people within it, but we are supporting organization of that student vote network. Good, good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Any online? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Student Trustee Matt Gossman, for your report. Uh, move on now to uh, remarks. Trustee uh, First Vice Chair uh, McPherson. I've been called a lot of names. Um, I've been getting out to my school councils lately. <coughs> I've been to Rural School in Lanark, as well as Montague Public School. Doing it a little bit differently this year. I'm leaving the PowerPoint at home, and we're essentially having a meet and greet and quite open talk sessions. And they actually, despite the fact I'm allocated 15 minutes, it's usually 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I've also been working with a group in Smith Falls. Uh, this one strikes home a wee bit. It's an Asperger's support group. I've become involved because of my son's needs. Um, again, it kind of is wearing two hats. It's not really my role as a school trustee, but again, it's about an hour and a half of very open and frank discussion about how our students are doing in our schools. And proud to announce that my son is now entering into politics, and maybe he'll make sure he gets out and votes. But for some strange reason, he's decided to run for head boy at North Elmsley Public School. And he's expecting me home by 9 o'clock tonight to help him write his speech. I guess he wants some help from Dad, seeing as I've been at it a long time. So that's my report. All right. Thank you, uh, Trustee McPherson. Any others? Uh, Trustee McMillan? I, uh, thank you. I had the privilege last Friday <coughs> to be at BCI to, uh, to watch the production of Godspell which was um, a collaborative project between Thousand Islands Secondary School and Brockville Collegiate. Uh, I brought my mother with me, and uh, it was probably the most professional performance that I have ever witnessed. It was evident that there was cooperation um, not only from the staff who was behind that, the, the, the students as well, but also the community. The band itself were made up of community members, and it, it did my heart uh, a lot of good to be able to see that kind of cooperation between the schools. Instead of competition on the playing field, you saw cooperation. It was a wonderful experience. And I think it's also a testament to the, the value of the arts and how important it is that we, we value the arts in our educational system and that uh, we're all, always mindful of the benefits of, of a strong arts program, whether it be through drama, through visual arts, through music. It, it's one of those things that uh, I think we have to be mindful of. So I just want to compliment both BCI and Thousand Islands staff and students for uh, an incredibly well done performance. All right, thank you. Trustee Karkner? Uh, I have given each of the trustees a copy of the uh, local guide for Prescott Russell, trying to bring Prescott Russell into the forefront since we tend to have been uh, in the background a little bit in the past. And also to let you know that we are hosting the international plowing match in our area in 2011 and I will be coming back to the board at some point to make sure that we are uh, involved in that. I've already spoken to the director and he's on board so just to let everyone know that I will be back with requests. Good. We had, uh, when was it that we had it? <coughs> Lanark had it, Ottawa Carlton's had it. I definitely won't miss the one in uh, Prescott Russell. But we have a good tradition of working with. Leeds uh, County had it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, recently, right? Yes, Leeds quite County. recently. Yeah. Good. Uh, Trustee Garrow. Yeah, just to, uh, now that we're looking at a new, uh, I guess, arrangement with uh, Akasasi Mohawk Board of Education and our uh, 
tuition agreement uh, just need some dates for when we could have a joint meeting between our trustees and uh, with the uh, Aquasas Board of Education trustees. And uh, I think the last one was here. Maybe if uh, I'll have to check. Yeah, we had. I think we had it at Central. Did we not? Yeah. That's yeah. Right, yeah. So, so are they going to host this time, or try to host this time, okay? So. That's great. Uh, the other thing is that. Uh, uh, we had a conference call today on, uh, I sent you things on Shannon's dream, and of course it's uh, going to be forefront, I guess, at the uh, uh, OPSPA meeting this uh, weekend, And uh, but there was something on CTV where 12-year-old boys raised $25,000 with Pepsi and uh, for playground equipment up in Etowapiska, and it was on CTV, t I guess, today sometime, but... Uh, we are having a virtual <coughs> summit with our national chief, and that's at Vancouver, uh, Vancouver Island University, which he's a chancellor, and that's going to be aired tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Anybody who wants to come on, it's on our website, AFN website, and it's with post-secondary <coughs> students, and it's being picked up right across the country with uh, various uh, university groups, uh, students, associations, and as I say, uh, right to Dell Housing. Anyway, I think uh, Nipissing, uh, Ottawa U, uh, I'm trying to think which one's in uh, Alberta, by uh, First Nation University of uh, Canada in Saskatchewan, and uh, so but it'll be aired at 1 Eastern Standard Time. What are we, in daylight time? Standard time. Tomorrow. So it'll be 10 o'clock for BC time. That's tomorrow. All right, just be, uh, before I move on to anybody else, uh, those on the line, uh, we just had three speakers. Uh, did you have, could you hear them all? Yes, I barely. Just barely. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you guys. Yes, I, I'd just like to say, um, may I speak or has somebody got their hand up? No, you can go right ahead. Floor is yours, Trustee okay, Swan. Thank you. Um, I, I toured, I started a, uh, touring my schools and uh, I went to Centennial 67. I have to say what a lovely school that is and it reminds me a lot of uh, Algonquin Public School as a small school that had closed uh, during the 2020 and um, I was very impressed by the teachers. I know they just recently received an award from the board and uh, I'm very proud of the students and, and the teachers and how they work so well together in that school. Um, on a, on a, a sad note, um, as a new trustee, I had a very sad situation um, occur in my schools in Prescott. Uh, a mother passed away of two students at uh, North Granville and also uh, the elementary school. She had three uh, children or stepchildren. And uh, I have to commend the board and the community and the parent council on how well everyone pulled together last week. I, the support was there for the students, uh, the teachers, <coughs> The principal, the acting principal, did an excellent job at North, or sorry, South Granville. I said North Granville, and uh, I just have to commend the whole community for pulling together for this family. And I will be following up once I get back from Toronto, and have kept in touch with uh, Director Thomas on this. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, Trustee McAllister. I just wanted to say that I uh, was invited and attended the uh, Gananoque Secondary School Co-op uh, Luncheon, which was held to uh, recognize the employers of the area who were participating in the uh, in the co-op program. And um, I, I think uh, Diane Kirkby, the teacher there, as well as the whole school and the uh, the employers as a whole, are to be commended for the, uh, the the good show and the good participation and partnership that they have. I've been uh, involved w as well with uh, a visit to Thousand Islands Elementary School and uh, Lynn Public School uh, Parents Council. The, um, at one of those meetings, as well as the uh, as, as Metav Metaview as well, at Metaview uh, in particular, uh, the, the parent volunteers expressed some concern with regard to the hot lunch program and the, the constraints imposed by the most recent legislation. And I have uh, spoken to uh, to you, Chair, about this, and perhaps it's something that we could put on the agenda for the next meeting, because there is um, there are some severe limitations in terms of what can be served and what can't, and apparently some schools are 
handling it better than others. And um, I think there's an opportunity here to learn one from uh, from the other with regard to uh, lunches and hot meals and that kind of issue. The um, today we received just this afternoon we received uh, the capital estimates project. Actually, uh, just you did. I, I did. Just you. I was just forwarding it to you as it was your uh, request to get that for feedback. So at that point, it was just a um, a draft. To you. Will this uh, come up again at another? Yeah, point? the that report will become a regular part of the okay. next cycle of meetings. I wanted to thank Jeremy for that because um, I haven't had a chance to study it, but it's good to know uh, what is currently going on with regard to uh, capital projects in, in our awards. The uh, next thing that I'd like to report on is the trustee code of conduct. That uh, meeting was held uh, last uh, Wednesday, I believe, and um, I was elected chair of the committee. And I wanted to thank uh, Trustee McPherson for the... Uh, the information that he provided, as well as Trustee McCray, they both provided information with regard to uh, uh, municipal <coughs> councils uh, in the area that have a similar uh, code of conduct. Uh, I myself and uh, others uh, provided for the library uh, information with regard to what other boards are doing. And to make a long story short about the code of conduct, the next meeting is March the 30th, and everybody. Uh, has a homework assignment, and uh, I think we're going to get this done relatively quickly and easily. And our goal is to have it perhaps for uh, the final pr uh, copy for May. I've been working on two other items, and that is the uh, at the October-November meeting when we were not trustees, at least I was not a trustee, um, financial statements uh, were presented by... Uh, uh, Mr. Gales and Ms. Barkley, and um, I just want to uh, hope, I hope I'm asking that they be put on the agenda so that we can discuss them um, at, at, a, at a future meeting. The same applies to the 1000 and 2000 review. Um, I looked at the recommendations and I have some questions about those, uh, which I will forward, but which I would like to raise uh, in this forum at some point. Uh, and I also have to, uh, I'm asking if, um, can we have some sort of a report perhaps at the next meeting with regard to progress on the uh, transportation consortium mm -hmm. with our co-terminus board? It's already on there. Um, the final thing that I would like to give notice of is that I have some, we have a, a sheet here which is, uh, I, I suspect it's confidential. Um, the principles don't are they still are we holding them still? I think do until tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, tomorrow at noon. Yes, so tomorrow noon. All right. What what I'm what I'm questioning here is um, the the protocol that is followed with regard to the approval of these uh, these principalships and vice principalships and frankly any other staff uh, appointments. I know the, um, the explanation that I was given by you, Chair, is that uh, in the past the, um, the board more or less acted as a rubber stamp and uh, passed them uh, time and time again so that as a result that process was dropped. And I understand that. I do think that um, as a board of trustees we should have the opportunity to at least uh, give our approval formally of, of appointments. I don't believe that we should be involved in the micromanagement of those appointments because that is the duty of the director. But uh, so I, I'm just giving uh, everyone a heads up that I'd like to see it discussed uh, again uh, at a future meeting. And I believe that includes <coughs> my remarks. Okay. Yep. I think that uh, you've given us previous notice on all of those items and various, they are coming forward at various times. Um, the uh, one on the um, changes to the hot lunch program and, and nutrition programs, 
uh, we, you and I did discuss that, and we're looking at uh, bringing in um, a resource person to sort of explain some of the supports they're offering in some of the jurisdictions that seem to be handling, ha being able to adapt to the changes a little faster, and so that's in progress right now. So hopefully February, if not February, then it'll be March. Okay, good. Okay. Thank you. Chair Peters, Ma? Yep. May I just make a comment on that, on the hot lunch program? Uh, I, I'd danger. like to share with uh, Trustee McAllister, I'm going to a meeting February 7th uh, at Oxford on Rideau, and um, it's a North Granville family of schools, and they're actually bringing someone in, fr in from the health unit. And that's one of the items for discussion is the changes in the legislation in regards to what can be served in the schools. So I, I, I would like to share with everyone after that meeting the information I received. So just to give you a heads up that that's what they're doing uh, up in North Granville. Right. This did come up at uh, my family schools, and that's where I came across. In fact, all those schools were were seemingly able to uh, adopt the changes, so they actually must have some additional information. Anyway, we'll move forward with that one and uh, get that to the table. Thank you. <coughs> Just as a note, uh, trustees, um, the comment section... Uh, is chiefly, I mean, officially it's an opportunity for the chair and director. Um, it's always been expanded uh, to allow trustees to make announcements and or highlight some of the activities. Um, but in specific on requests to agendas, and I may, it was Trustee McAllister, so I'll direct it at you. We have other venues for that, and so I, that's probably a little better use of it than this because there's not, um, if you, there's, it's just a comment, and I understand that's how you're, how you're saying it, but um, it almost looks like we're transacting business in an information item section of the agenda. And so I'm not sure whether that's something that we want to adopt. I mean, that's something that we haven't done in the past, is bring up items at this time to be added to future agendas. So if that's something that we want to look at, then we should probably discuss that and make that change to the agenda. Anyway, I just bring that up. Um, and uh, we can discuss that at a later time. Um, so... That being done, do you have any comments? Uh, no, no, this evening. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Oh, I just go ahead. I, I think I'm safe to make this announcement. Uh, last last Everybody week. Everybody is safe. We're, we're <laughs> working week, through this, right? You know what I'm saying here. Last week I attended the uh, a meeting out in Oxford, Mills, of uh, the Parent Involvement Committee, and I was the trustee representative. And uh, it, Parent Involvement Committee is a committee that's mandated by the Ministry of Education. And I just want to bring attention to a certain date so everyone can keep this tucked in the back of their mind. That on February 15th, there will be the second virtual school council. It'll be uh, uh, between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. And our chair, Greg Petersma, will be making a speech uh, on the next level school councils. So I just want to bring that to everyone's attention in case people want to tune in and check our chair out. Thanks. I believe it. Go ahead. It, it's more than an opportunity to uh, to listen to the. Oh yes. Uh, no, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good opportunity, is it not, to uh, for the school councils to share information? Yeah. yeah. Oh, such yeah. as one of the items that I raised being yeah. the food uh, lunch program. Yeah. Oh, there's no question. I was just promoting our chair. Thank you. Uh, yes, the, the, that is uh, developing into I think to be a really useful function for school councils. Okay. Uh, questions from the media. Sure. Yes. Thank you. I'm with the recorder in time, and there's a set of keys here. Um, just a couple of questions. Uh, Trustee McDonald, when in his discussion about uh, the OPSPA report, uh, mentioned GSNs. What are GSNs? That's the Grants for Student Needs, and that's the um, uh, the the way that the ministry funds. Um, school boards. So it's the a document that outlines um, how they uh, what how they calculate the amount that we get to operate the school board. Okay, and that's a public document. 
Thank you very much. I did have a question also in regard to uh, um, uh, the minutes of the of the SEAC uh, meeting and, and the October numbers that, that were discussed. And my my pardon or pardon me if I'm if I'm just not familiar with the website enough. But is there an opportunity for for the media to, to look at some of these, uh, or specifically the SEAC minutes, because I, I was able to find uh, minutes of the other meetings uh, when I went to the site today. But something like that, and especially when it comes to numbers, uh, it would certainly be helpful if, uh, if we're working on a story of that nature. Sure. I'll put you in touch with um, Mr. Calder and Superintendent Edwards. And I'll just ask, too, that uh, Superintendent Edwards just uh, verify that we're getting updated minutes. Um, including reports to the website. Um, if you could just follow up on that as well. Does that help? Yeah, very much so. Thank you. As I said, I found the other ones. It was just the SEAC that I, I couldn't find. Um, and in regard to the, um, the, the new legislation for school menus, um, is there a superintendent I should speak to uh, or I could speak to to discuss when that legislation has to take effect and how it's going to be implemented? Uh, that would be uh, Superintendent Lumsden, I believe. But I would work again with, uh, with, Mr. Calder? with Mr. Calder and uh, the director and just make sure that that's the right person. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, motion to adjourn. Trustee Garrow, Trustee Carpenter, all in favor? Aye. Oh, all right. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you in a couple weeks.